Cranbrook School's alumnus, Todd Williams, grew up immersed in Saarinen's architecture, working today in New York with his partner, Billy Chen. Their office has won major awards from the American Institute of Architects. For Cranbrook, Williams and Chen are designing a new athletic complex, including a field house and an enclosed swimming pool that opens to nature. Cranbrook was a kind of place where it seemed that you could continue to explore and explore and every day would bring a new magical corner that would seem to be mine and mine alone. My parents knew Aero Cernan and, uh, and knew him well enough that he gave advice about their son that would be an architect. My husband said, Aero, oh, my son wants to be an architect, what do you think? And he answered, well, if he wants to be an architect, he can't be anything else. He can't possibly be anything else. But if he wants to earn any money, he won't. I look forward to the day when someone will be doing the breaststroke and hearing the Bach cello suite playing in their mind. When someone will be practicing the crawl and imagining a painting at the same time when someone will be perfecting their butterfly and thinking about a performance. I hope this pool will develop the strength both of the body and of the creative imagination in the true spirit of Cranbrook and Kingswood. The mind and the heart floating and soaring, balanced and whole. I like to build a building any place, but building a building here was an especial challenge and just an incredible honor. We're not going to try to duplicate sentimentally what we think that Saarinen might have done. Uh, we're going to actually act as individual artists and architects in our own time to see what we can do to make a vision which existed in the past be alive on its own terms today. And this whole landscape in 1929 was conceptualized by Saarinen as being one that would end in a building at the end of the, this axis. What we need to do is in a way to finish this landscape, to finish this long axis, and that's really the, the great pleasure, the pressure, the excitement of the project of the natatorium. And then between those elements will be crushed down. It was great to have Peter also on board. Peter is both an architect and landscape architect. So what will this scheme do to en enhance the, the axis? Well, of course, the building creates a very nice backdrop uh, to, the, to that uh, vista. And the position of the turnaround and what we're doing to the grades here will reinforce the continuity of that. And one of the nice things is, of course, the position of the lion up at the uh, art museum. And that acts as kind of a fulcrum uh, on, from that uh, lion, one can see this site. That's where really this site appears. And from that lion, then looking That's eastward, you see the house. We're building a singular space that's, let's say, 110 feet by 110 feet, which is the swimming pool. If I had my way, the building would feel like a tree. In the forest, you would be able to walk up to it and feel it, and you wouldn't see it. Maybe it would be like seeing an elephant in the the forest, you run up against the, the leg and you're not really sure what that thing is, but it's something big, it's something amazing. A pool can really be a very boring environment. It is a very boring environment. You know, once your child has swum the race, it's all about practice and uh, constancy, the even lap after lap, the, the fact that the environment inside so often is exactly the same. Even the rectangle of water is usually the same. If you've been to one, you've been to all of them. But here, this would be very different. There are certain standards we have to have, but they'll be different. I mean, wood will play a role, stone will play a role. Um, and even the tile in the pool, we've decided to make kind of glass tile. I mean, a tactile glass tile, not one that's slippery, but one that will catch light a little more deeply than another. We're interested is a, a brick uh, from a, a company called Endicott. We met a woman there who puts glazes on bricks. And we said, could you make us some samples that seem like they're watercolor? And we now, with her, have developed these amazingly beautiful bricks that look like the glazes on a Ming vase. 
we're not trying to bring the brick inside. The inside is made of block, an ordinary material that we see in lots of different ways here in the campus. A lot of people think Cranbrook's made up of all these sort of perfect, rich materials. It isn't. It's made up of some very ordinary materials that contribute to the larger whole. When you're doing architecture, I'm not sure if you're trying to make something wonderful, you can never make sure. Yeah, it's, that's right. It's impossible. I mean, I think you have to take the risk and you have to be aware of it. Um, and I think that's why you have to wake up every morning a little worried. But see, it's not, that's why it's nice to have somebody who <laughs> says it's okay. <laughs> a pool is often a very humid environment. And you spend a lot of money to get rid of the humidity. And we believe that by this system that we've got, which where the walls will open up and the breezes will take the humid air and then exhaust it through these oculi, we have a great way to have a naturally conditioned, not an air conditioned pool. So we'll have wooden panels on all four walls of the pool and they will pivot and allow light, air, sun, breezes to come through maybe even the scent of the springtime or the fall. If someone's building a fire, it would be great to have the sort of smell of the wood being burned coming through. The idea of the two oculi really is, comes from a kind of practical basis and also a kind of sense of the spirit. One of them refers to the morning light and this one refers to the afternoon light. What we wanted to do is make it into two very different experiences so that in the wintertime when it's closed, it feels like a huge void, but it feels closed. And when the weather changes, then we wanted to pull back the roof and really have it transform. So you wouldn't look up and see the same thing at different times of the year, that you'd have very, very different both physical experience and visual experience at different times of the year. I suppose about half the things I do are done I back into them, <laughs> and, I, and I think I backed into the space. My first thought was that it should be an Olympic length pool and then longer, but we needed to have this 25 yard pool, and beyond that it should be wide, and then you have to just accept it, that's the way it is, that's the requirement. The proportions of the room feel great, even the squareness feels great, and I don't know that I should be given any credit for that. Um, that's strictly by the rules, but it's really how one settles those rules, and I think that's where we can be given credit. It's more about this being a, a room that contains the, the pool, the water, in a good way and does it in a way that's right for the users, but it also then releases out. I mean, this long, 40-foot long window is terribly important to me to release that space out to the side. This wooden wall here is very, very important in order to contain the space on this side. It's important to me that this great blue plane actually floats from the perimeter walls of the building. And those kinds of things really make the, the room come alive and the proportions of something that's rather dumb, frankly, become valued and, and beautiful. The incline walk is really part of the many passages. It also happens to be the way by which we can walk through the landscape, an internal landscape and then cross over the gorge to go to the Saarinen buildings. So this is really another path that creates a gentle way by which you can walk from one building to the next. The bridge isn't necessarily part of one or the other. So in a way, it's a kind of foreign element between the two. This building is also a building about walls, the wall that forms the gorge, the wall that ends the long axis. The blue is almost connecting to the, the metal sheathing there, but the blue is also connecting to the sky and the blue is connecting to the pool and the green is connecting to the copper and the trees and so on. It's not a big building. It's actually a very big building inside, but right here it's a rather modest, almost like a pavilion that one might walk in. things that make a, a pool fast. Number one, this is a deep pool, and the depth of the pool actually enhances and makes more still water. But the width of the lanes is such that you really have room for the water to, in a way, uh, become still from one swimmer to the next. 
You have a gutter that's a fast gutter that draws off the splash of the swimmer so that it doesn't rebound from the side of the pool. I think that it's comfortable seating and you feel very much part of the experience of being in the pool. One of the great surprises is how people love the building. I mean, just universally love the building. I am certain that this is a building which is extraordinarily responsive to the day and to the season. So I want the days, I want to be here during the days when the sun changes, when clouds go racing by and it's, it's at low humidity. And I wish within that same day, but it would be another one that the rain would come down in great torrents through the oculus. The costs of any struggle of the heart are worth it. It is harder to do something well than it is to do something easily. That, uh, and that the joy must be in the process of doing it, and the joy must be in the results when it's completed. I'm thrilled to make that effort. I mean, Cranbrook's taught me to make that effort. Saarinen taught me to make that effort. That's what we learned from Saarinen.